Hey guys, and welcome back. So far, we have talked about the structure of our atom and how to arrange our elements in the periodic table. And today we're gonna to keep it moving by talking about isotopes. So a really quick review, what number tells us the identity of an element? Go ahead and pause your video and see if you can remember the answer to this question. It should be in your notes from day one. All right, so that number that tells us the identity of an element is gonna be the atomic number. So remember, typically on our elemental box on the table, it's gonna be on the top and it's always gonna be a whole number. Now remember, our atomic number is also equal to the number of protons that we have in the nucleus of an atom. And that's gonna be very important as we move forward today. So our atomic number tells us our element and it tells us how many protons we have. So an atom can have different versions of itself. So just because it's an atom of gold or copper or carbon, it doesn't mean it's necessarily identical to other atoms of that element. And the way that it can change is by changing its mass. So the mass of the atom can change and give us something called isotopes. So an isotope is one or more versions of an atom with the same number of protons, so the same atomic number, but a different number of neutrons, so a different mass number. Now, if that seems a little confusing, let's pause and let's go back to our first lesson where we talked about the structure of the atom. So remember, our nucleus is comprised of our protons, which are positive, and our neutrons, which are neutral. And together, those two subatomic particles make up the mass of the atom. Because the electron, which is negatively charged, it doesn't have much mass, so we don't even consider it having mass at all. So therefore, the mass is our protons plus our neutrons. Now, we can't change the proton number of an element and then have it be the same element. Because remember, our proton determines the identity. So for example, let's say we have magnesium, which is atomic number 12. If we change the protons, then we would no longer have magnesium. However, if we manipulate the neutrons and we have a different amount of neutrons, the mass of the atom can change, but as long as the atomic number is 12, it's still an atom of magnesium. It's just that those atoms are a little bit different in that they have different masses, okay? So here for an isotope, it's gonna be the same atomic number, but a different number of neutrons. Okay. Now, when we notate our isotopes, there's a couple different ways we can do this. The first way is with something called a hyphen notation. And this is where the mass number is written with a hyphen after the element's name. So for example here, we have copper 65. So of course, this is gonna be a metal. This is our element copper. We have that hyphen. And then the 65 lets us know that the AMU, so the mass of that atom of copper is 65 AMU, okay? So the hyphenated symbol tells us the atomic mass. This mass number is the protons plus the neutrons, okay? We also have something called a nuclear or a nuclide symbol, and this has three different components. It has a subscript, which is the atomic number, and that's here on the bottom. It has a superscript, so super means above, so that's the mass number. And then it's got the chemical symbol of the element. So this is copper 65, so what we just saw in that hyphenated symbol, as a nuclear symbol. So on the bottom we have our atomic number, also the number of protons, the, the number that tells us this is copper. So if we looked on our periodic table and found the atomic number 29, it would be associated with copper. And then the mass number tells us this is the weight of the nucleus of the atom, and it's the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, okay? So this tells us all that information about that element there. And then just a refresher for that box that we find on the periodic table, we have our atomic number on the top, then we have our elemental name, we have our element symbol, 
and then we have our average atomic mass on the bottom. Now the average atomic mass, so the number that you see on the table is actually an average of all the isotopes of that um, particular element. So for magnesium, if we took all the isotopes and average them together, the average mass would be 24.3050, and you can find that on the table. Now, some tables, depending on what you're referencing, these two numbers might be flipped, so the mass might be on top and the number on the bottom. The way that you can always tell the difference is that, number one, the atomic number will always be smaller, and it will always be a whole number, okay? So the atomic number is always the smaller number, and it's always a whole number. So to help us figure out the number of protons and electrons and neutrons in an atom, we can use something called APEMAN. And APEMAN is just an acronym for the math that you can do to figure out each of these um, subatomic particles. So the first part of this is APE, which is A-P-E, and that's right here on the top. So your atomic number is equal to your protons, is equal to your electrons, okay? And now there's a little star by the electrons because right now we're just talking about neutral atoms, so we don't have to worry about charges on our um, atoms just yet, so we're just gonna assume that for right now, our atomic number is equal to our protons, is equal to our electrons, okay? So A is equal to P is equal to E. So if we take magnesium as an example again with that atomic number 12, so in a neutral atom of magnesium, it would have 12 protons and 12 electrons, okay? So A is equal to P is equal to E. Then for the second part, so that's the eighth part of the eight man. And this is, side note, also why I had you watch a video on Bigfoot <laughs> this morning, because remember I told you it would have something to do with the lesson, is because eight man is the acronym that helps us with this math. All right, so the man part, the mass number minus the atomic number is equal to our neutrons, okay? So if we know the mass and we know the atomic number, if we subtract those, we can get the number of neutrons in our um, the atom of our element, okay? So let's say that, just for example, let's say in magnesium, we'll take magnesium again as an example, let's say our mass number for magnesium is 24, okay? We'll get that from the table and for you guys, we'll typically round to the nearest whole number. So let's say our mass number is 24, okay? So 24 minus our atomic number, which is 12, would give us 12 neutrons. So 24 minus 12 equals 12. So in a neutral atom of magnesium with a mass number of 24, we would have 12 protons, 12 electrons, and 12 neutrons. Okay, so eight man. A is equal to P is equal to E. M minus A is equal to N. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's give it a try. So here we have iodine 127. So remember in the nuclide symbol, we have our atomic number on the bottom and we have our atomic mass on the top. So our atomic mass is going to be our protons plus our neutrons, and we always know how many protons we have because it's just the atomic number, okay? So here, our atomic number is 53, so we're gonna have 53 protons, okay? Now that's the eight part, right? So A is equal to P. For our neutrons, remember to calculate our neutrons, we have to do our atomic mass, which is 127 minus our atomic number, which is 53. Okay, so 127 minus 53 is going to be 74. So we have 53 protons and 74 neutrons. Now for our electrons, again, this is a neutral atom, right? So our protons are positive, our electrons are negative, so they need to balance each other out. So A, atomic number, is equal to P, protons, is equal to E, electrons. So again, our electrons are also going to be 53. In the isotopes that we're doing today, 
your protons and electrons will always be the same number. All right, let's do one more example here. So here we have europium. This is our nuclide symbol. Atomic number on the bottom, atomic mass on the top. First, we need our protons. Now we know our atomic number on the bottom is equal to our number of protons, which are positive. So our number of protons is just going to be 63, okay? Now, for our number of neutrons, we know to get our neutrons, we have to take our atomic mass and subtract our atomic number. Again, because our mass is equal to our protons plus our neutrons, and if we know that our protons are equal to the atomic number, we just take our mass, subtract that atomic number, and then we get our number of neutrons, okay? So 152 minus 63 is gonna give us 89 neutrons. And then of course we're dealing with only neutral atoms here. So A, atomic number, is going to be equal to P. Protons is going to be equal to E, electrons, which will give us 63 electrons. Okay? So that's pretty much it. So the, the main thing, the main takeaway from today is that isotopes are atoms of the same element, so they all have the same atomic number, just with different atomic masses. So what they're differing in is the number of neutrons that they have in their nucleus, okay? And we have to be able to calculate that using eight man. So A is equal to P is equal to E, and then the mass number minus the atomic number will give us our number of neutrons, okay? Now you guys will be doing um, a couple of Google Slides, doing some practice with eight man today. Now here's the thing, and this is important when you do that practice. If the mass number is not given to you, okay, so if it doesn't give you a nuclide or a hyphenated symbol, you need to take the mass number from the periodic table, okay? So you're going to have to find the mass on the table and use that as your mass number. However, <laughs> the mass on the table is going to be the average atomic mass. So it's going to be have some decimal places, round the mass to the nearest whole number, and then you can do your math. Okay, so like for example, if you were looking at Europia and the average atomic mass is 152.005 whatever, round it to 152, okay? Most of your examples, you're gonna be given the atomic mass, but if you have an example where you need to provide the mass, use the average atomic mass on the table, just round it to the nearest whole number, okay? All right, so that's it for today. If you have questions, let me know, and if not, I will catch you in the next one. And also, there are a few more examples on the slideshow, but I figured a couple was sufficient for today in the video.